This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Do not panic! Do not panic! Well, let's get back to it. Oh, my cron. An Arctic blast is set to uh, send temperatures plummeting to minus five centigrade this weekend and blanket parts of Britain in snow. Snow? Oh, no. And still thousands of homes remain without heating a week after Storm Arwen destroyed power lines across the country, which would be surprising if it happened in Burkina Faso, if there is indeed such a place. But it's pretty pathetic in modern go-ahead first world global Britain. I mean, really. We can't do anything in this country. Norway or Canada literally ploughs on under 83 feet of snow and planes land and trains run and buses arrive at their destination. We get two snowflakes fall on cold ground and we lose power. And the roads are out. And public transport is cancelled. And we have to spend three days locked in a pub with an Oasis tribute band. Rock and roll! You know, that, that music doesn't last long enough. This beautiful music, it doesn't, it just, the, the, the only thing that's wrong with it is it doesn't last long enough. Shall I put it on a loop? No. Oh, okay then. The Met Office said a flurry is set to hit Scotland before eastern parts of the country are covered in nine centimetres of snow. And um, I'll uh, translate that from evil European surrender measurements so that you don't have to. I mean, we like to divide by 12. Europeans like to divide by 10. Where's the sense in that? So, 9 centimetres to feet is uh, multiply 9, uh, divide by 5, and um, add uh, 32. So, 9 nines are 91. Divide by 5 is about roughly, it's like 5 into 9 is 1, and carry the 3, and um, 5 into 30 is 7, so that's 17, plus 32 is 57. <gasps> wow! 57 feet of snow in some parts of the country over the weekend. Can you believe that? No. Temperatures could fall as low as minus 5 centigrade at the weekend, and I am mentally all tired out after that last bit of uh, mental arithmetic, so you do the change to Her Majesty's Fahrenheit. Stephen Keats, media advisor and marine meteorologist at the Met Office. <laughs> There's no such job title. That's ridiculous. He's media advisor and marine meteorologist at the Met Office? Uh. Rubbish. Anyway, he said it's generally quite cold. Yeah, well, we don't need an expert to tell us that. We know that, Stephen Keats, media advisor and me, me... Oh, never mind. He said, snowfall can be seen mainly over higher ground for the most part, and I sincerely hope that your part remains unaffected. Tomorrow, a mixture of sunny spells and showers. The showers heaviest and the most frequent in the northwest. Yeah, well, <laughs> I bet it is. <laughs> I bet it is. Checking while you wait. Light rain and a moderate breeze tonight. Uh, light rain and showers tomorrow. Um, sunny intervals on Sunday. Pfft, rubbish. And then raining on Monday and raining on Tuesday and raining on Wednesday and raining on Thursday and raining on Friday and raining next Saturday and raining on Sunday and raining on next Monday and raining on Tuesday and raining on Wednesday the 15th and raining on Thursday the 16th. Every single day for the rest of your lives. Damn it. Oh well, never mind. Tomorrow, a mixture of sunny spells and showers. Showers heaviest and most frequent in the north and the west. Uh, also, thunder, lightning, very, very frightening. <coughs> Outlook to Tuesday, cold and frosty in the west. Showers elsewhere. Rain clears easterly on Monday. Wet and windy on Tuesday. So that's just blech. Would you like to hear the long-range weather forecast for the entirety of December? No. Right, this is to Friday the 17th. Unsettled start to the period, showers, chance of snow in the north, then showers or rain and windy, followed by longer spells of rain, followed by rain, then showers, with a chance of snow, feeling cold. Oh, <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> that is rubbish. And do you want to know what it's going to be like over Christmas and New Year? Oh, OK, then. Milder than earlier in the month and more settled around Christmas and towards New Year. <gasps> Milder than earlier in the month and more settled around Christmas and towards New Year? We'll take it! Oh. Uh, by the way, those hoping for a white Christmas, Bookmakers Coral says there's a 67% chance of snow falling somewhere in Britain on Christmas Day. Bet now. 
Bit nah, place your bets, bit nah. It seems pretty weird to be betting on the outcome of Jesus' birthday, but I'm not religious, so what do I know? If you put a bet on and pray, will you win? Does that work? Mikey emails, you were invited to our annual Christmas knees up at number 10. Fancy dress optional. Oh, OK, then. I'll come as a criminal. With a swag bag over my... Sh oh, someone's already doing that? Oh, OK, then it's a no from me. Here's call in um, Glasgow. Yes, Robert. Oh, hello. Good oh. evening, Nick. Yes, Robert. How are you? I'm great, mate. Are you wet? Well, it's pouring. Mm-hmm. But I'm inside nice and warm and cosy. Ah. So, I have two questions. First question is, when are you going to have your Christmas meal, your Christmas dinner? You're on air on Christmas Eve, yeah. starting the Z. Mm -hmm. So, I know you're having pizza. Pizza. Mm, pizza. <laughs> Are you going to have something with it or just a pizza? Um, well, I might have a crisp. Are you going or, to or have six? some wine? I'm going to have some wine. No, I don't drink. Booze. Yeah, maybe a little bit of wine. <laughs> I have my Christmas the week before I start. I do all of that. I pretend that it's Christmas. And I, and I recommend this every year because everybody else is... Mm. Uh, after I've finished my whole thing, because I'll, I'll do Christmas about the whatever, whatever the middle of the week previous to the twenty fourth is. It's like you know, it'd be the twentieth or the seventeenth, something like that. Yeah, and um, so I've done mine by the seventeenth. By the eighteenth, I'm doing uh, pretend Boxing Day. Meanwhile, every, <laughs> everybody else is running around pulling their hair out, trying to get everything together for Christmas, and I'm just sitting there serene. <laughs> And relaxed. Very good, very good. Yeah. So, second question is, Steve Allen mm -hmm. said he'd left you some Christmas treats. No, he ha well, unless Christmas tr treats are um, uh, mandarins. Who, who wants a mandarin as a Christmas <laughs> treat? <laughs> no, I've got no Christmas treats. Okay. You want to get your okay. finger out, uh, Steve? We're seriously <laughs> lacking in snacks here, mate. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, James Tex, je me plains. What? I am a professional French clown, and I, obje <laughs> and I object to being compared to your prime minister, a clown. Yeah. A clown bodge. Um. Yes. All right. If you want me to do that straight away, why not? Excellent place to start. A minister hit back at Emmanuel Macron after it was claimed that the French president called Bodger Johnson a clown. A clown? Why would anybody think that? I, I can't comment on that. George Freeman described the alleged remark. George Freeman is a minister. Uh, anybody know who he's the minister of? What he's the minister of? Anyone? Oh, too late. Me either. George Freeman described the alleged remark as pretty unhelpful. He said, of course the Prime Minister isn't a clown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's been so many of these people that have been sent out on the media uh, around uh, this week to deny what we all know is the truth about this or that that this uh, government is guilty of. Do you think their heart sinks when their number comes up? <clears throat> they get wheeled out to say, oh, of course, of course they didn't have any parties at number 10. Oh! <laughs> no rules were broken in the breaking of these rules. Please. Do they think we're idiots? Yes. George Freeman described the alleged remark that Bodger Johnson was a clown as pretty unhelpful and said, of course, the prime minister isn't a clown. Do you, think he, do you think that was in his notes before he went out? You must make it absolutely clear that the Prime Minister isn't a clown. Of course he isn't a clown. That's scientifically accurate, as the actual Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for Science, Research and Innovation, George Freeman, said so. That's his title, Undersecretary of State for Science, Research and Innovation, George Freeman. 
It's scientifically provable that Bodger Johnson is not a clown, apparently. The claims appeared in a French magazine called Le Canard en Chaine, which in, for, for uh, fact fans means the chained duck. <laughs> Poor duck. The magazine that re uh, reported that Emmanuel Macron, a French person, no! uh, called uh, Johnson a clown and described the British uh, government as a circus. Yeah, completely correct in every respect. I've used the phrase many, many, many times. So many times, in fact, that uh, it's, I should probably be in jail for 51 weeks. This is a catastrophic clown show that we've got running the shop here. What's, what's French for catastrophic? Uh, catastrophe, probably. <clears throat> Johnson, uh, Johnson, <laughs> Johnson is a clown and the British government are a circus. So reports a French magazine called The Chained Duck. <laughs> this is so perfect in every detail. Bodger is a clown. The British government is a circus. It sounds like completely correct in every respect to me. And as though to prove it, Johnson came in, came in, squeezed into his clown car, and all the wheels fell off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, funny, no? No. Insiders told the investigative weekly, investigative, investigative weekly magazine, The Chained Duck, that the French president had also called Mr. Johnson a a good for nothing. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, what is he actually good for? And that is a serious question. I mean, he's no good at following his own rules that would get us fined for disobeying. He's no good at relationships or being faithful. He's rubbish in a crisis. He can't take responsibility. He runs away from confrontation, literally into a fridge, when questioned by a TV host on a sofa. And he earns a fortune, but still can never find any money to pay for anything. As far as I can tell, he used to be funny, and that's it. <sighs> Fabulous. So, answers on a postcard or a text, if you insist. What is Boris Johnson actually good for? Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Science, Research and Innovation, George Freeman, was asked for his response to these comments from uh, Emmanuel Macron. He suggested the remarks could have been made because of the French presidential election, which is scheduled to take place in April next year. Yeah, quite possibly. But that doesn't stop them from being true, does it? He said, well, I think we're into pantomime season, aren't we? Oh, no, we're not. He says there's a French election coming. It's pretty unhelpful. Of course the Prime Minister isn't a clown, said Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for Science, Research and Innovation. <laughs> uh, is this real life or am I hallucinating? He said, um, the Prime Minister isn't a clown. He is the elected Prime Minister of this country with a very big mandate leading this country through the pandemic. OK, well, a couple of things. First off, no one needs to know how big his mandate is. Disgusting. And if his job is leading us through the pandemic, then he's failed by every count. Worst death numbers coupled with worst economic hit. Most money disappeared into the pockets of friends and donors. Least accountability. Worst at following his own rules. I mean, am I missing anything at all? And as for being the uh, pantomime season, <laughs> as I've previously said, oh no, it isn't. Macron blamed Britain leaving the EU as the starting point of ongoing tensions between the two countries. According to the magazine, Macron said very quickly, Boris Johnson realised that the situation was catastrophic for the British. There's no petrol in the pumps. There's a whole bunch of stuff missing. He positions himself as a victim. He makes France a scapegoat. He tries to turn every simplistic situation into a complex problem. We've been in this situation since March. Yeah. What's the uh, French for absolutely? Absolutely. Oh, right. Is it? Macron is then quoted as saying of Johnson, in private he says he's sorry to act this way, but he admits that above all he must respond to public opinion. It's then that Macron's alleged to have said, it's very sad to see a great country with which we could do so much being led by a clown. Johnson has the attitude of a good for nothing. Yeah, correct a mundo. Bodger Johnson is a good for nothing. Or is he? This is a texter. 
What is Boris Johnson good for? I'll start you off. We could use him as a draft excluder. There you are. <laughs> what else? Um, Think about it. You can text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk, tweet at LBC, um, and uh, the phone number 0345 6060 973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Shut up. I can't. Right, already I've got like 500 texts to uh, get through. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it. Andy emails, I see your old school was voted number one independent school in Scotland. I very much doubt it. They must ban parents listening to your efforts at temperature conversion when they try to sell the benefits of an expensive education. Oh, I'd like to see the evidence that that school was voted number one independent school in Scotland. Uh, Dan says, Bodger would make a perfect scarecrow. Richard texts, in regard to the question, what is Boris Johnson good for? He can't even switch on the Christmas lights in Downing Street. Have you seen the, the, the tree in uh, Trafalgar Square? I mean, normally it's pretty weak. It's a pretty weak uh, and pathetic affair. But this year, wow, the Norwegians must really hate us. It's, it, it, looks, it looks like the tree would look in the new year after most of its needles have fallen off and uh, it's been missing a couple of branches. It's pathetic. I mean, really, really weak. Thanks a lot, Norway. But as usual, the, the lights are abysmal. I mean, you can tart up a rubbish tree with great lights. As an example, not that it's a rubbish tree, it's a fantastic tree, it always is. I don't know how New York can afford it and we can't. Uh, never mind about Norway. I mean, OK, that, the tree comes from Norway. We don't have to put it in Trafalgar Square. We can get our own better tree and put it in Trafalgar Square, can't we? I mean, it's the centre of the, the blooming country. It's where all measurements are taken from, Trafalgar Square. Well, I know, it's like Charing Cross, but never mind. It's near there or thereabouts. Um, look at the tree in Rockefeller Centre in New York. It is, it, it's, it hurts your eyes to even look at a picture of it. It's so bright. I mean, it really is fantastic. It looks like something out of a, a Disney cartoon. It's amazing. And then look at our <laughs> pathetic, sad effort here. It, it, it's like a worker. I tweeted this the other day. Um, I've spent way too much time on Twitter. I've tried to give it up, but I can't. I said uh, something of the order of it's like uh, one worker, one bored worker with a fag in his mouth, tweeting with one hand through a string of lights at the tree with his other thought, yeah, that'll do, and then walked off. It's pathetic. I mean, really, really sad. It'd be better if it wasn't there. You just look at it and you think, oh. <laughs> You're supposed to go, ah, but you go, oh. Weak. Brighton, hello, John. Hello, Nick. Yeah, you ask what's Bodger, Bodger good for, he's good for winning by-elections. He's done it again. Barely. I don't think but it had he, well, anything to do with him. Yeah, well, it looks like he's in the clear again as well. Whatever he does, he's in the clear, isn't he, it seems? Well, <laughs> if yeah, if you mean, um, uh, is he going to f face the consequences that an ordinary person would face for breaking his own rules, then no, apparently not, because there is no evidence. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, well, almost anything that, 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 that comes his way. I mean, you look at the chaos of the uh, channel crossings and everything else that's going on, the, you know, the, the, that's happening, the, that Owen Patterson, etc. It just it seems not, nothing, uh, nothing uh, hits him. And it, well, the main thing is if he keeps winning by-elections, then he's in the clear, isn't he? You s yeah, so? I think that he used... Hello? Hello? Yep. Hello? 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 Yes? Hello? Is, that, is anybody there? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Are you still there? <laughs> no. No, I'm not. I left a while ago. All right, thanks a lot, John. Leave it with me. Did that make any sense? No. A little bit. Every now and again, there was uh, some sense that peeked through. <laughs> it peeked through and said... Hello? Yeah, hello? Thanks a lot, John. You've delighted us enough. What was he saying? Oh, yeah, that uh, nothing seems to uh, stick to Bodger. Yeah, I think that used to be the case, but things about, about you know, like a cooking, uh, like, uh, like a non-stick cooking pan, 
I think his Teflon is wearing off. I think things are beginning to stick to you, Budge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Only just barely scraped by in Sid Cup. You could have um, you could have put a a goat with a blue rosette up for election in Sid Cup, and it would have got through. <laughs> I don't know, there's something in the air down there. They seem to be utterly delighted with absolutely everything that's happening to them. I'll get into that in a minute. Not enough time at the moment. <sighs> Terry texts, uh, Bodger, leave him alone, he's trying his best. Right, you just get one of those. <laughs> Andy says, oh no, I've read that. Tim emails, um, are you going to put more mugs with your face on onto eBay? They would make good stocking fillers, best to include a certificate of authenticity. I think you must be emailing somebody else by mistake. You, you trying to email Steve Allen? Steve's not here right now. I've never had a mug with my face on on eBay or anything else with my face on for that matter. John Tech, stop picking on Boris every week, please. Oh, oh, John, did you hear something you didn't like on the radio? Oh, are you going to be okay? Alice Tex, uh, regarding George Freeman, uh, in answer. As to who had been at the party at number 10, he said, I don't know because I wasn't there. All of those people coming out with uh, with detailed instructions as to what to say. They're, we have not broken the rules. We have not broken the rules. Like blooming robots. Affirmative. Droids, he sends out. Correct. I, th I think he removes their brains and their hearts before sending them out to read off a prepared script. No rules were broken. <sighs> MTEX, Boris Johnson and his hard-working staff needed some time to relax and unwind. They did this safely and followed the rules. <laughs> Please give our brave leader a break. I think there's a seam of a sarcasma that runs through that like words through Black Bull Rock. 0345 606 0973. You can text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. Look at the time. It's 10 30. The news headlines with Zora Solomon. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 606 0973. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? It's about a radio show, dear. Billy texts, Boris is good at not answering difficult questions. Uh, Joanne says, Boris Johnson, what's he good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Rock and roll! That should be Boris Johnson. <laughs> what's he good for? Pat tweets, what's he good for? Uh, I suppose Bozo might be of use as a decoy while escaping from a <laughs> charging hippo. <laughs> Are you being offensive about his weight? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Yorkshire. Hello, Mike. Hi, Nick. Yeah. Um, just wondering what you thought about the week when you actually had it up carefully because you were talking about the minister before. Um, but it's only a couple of days since there was a minister on saying that he was going to cancel his department's Christmas party, which yeah. was a really not sort of on message, was it? What, uh, what message? <laughs> what, what's the message? On message? I didn't realise there was a message. I thought they were all over uh, the place, like um, uh, uh, like a like a monkey's dinner. No, the message was don't cancel your Christmas arrangements yet. And then his minister goes on and says, yeah, um, "I've cancelled my Christmas arrangements." Yeah, cancelled my Christmas arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> it's then, almost as though they don't know what they're doing. And then he had to raise coffee on Peston the other oh, night, and, and he actually took it easy on her in the end, because she just could do nothing but apologise at the end of the day. But then you had the throat woman on, who is the new um, vaccines czar. Oh, yeah. On Newsnight, and she did nothing but apologise. Everyone kept criticising, and then she was there as Boris's defender, and she kept saying, no, it wasn't very good, was it? We'll have to do better. Mm. And it was just a total bloody car crash at the end of yeah, the day. And then you had... A clown, Jacob, a clown car crash. Yeah, he comes into the middle of the ring, all the wheels fall off, and, and the doors, and then the engine blows up, yeah. And Uncle Jacob, with the £6 million loan from his... Um, 
tax haven company. Well, what the hell are ministers allowed to have tax havens for? Never mind the second jobs. <laughs> get, get rid of the tax haven accounts first. Yeah, I, I think that you'll find yourself in jail as soon as this phone call is uh, completed, uh, Mike. There'll be, there'll be people bursting through your door any moment now, probably spraying the place with gunfire. But I think the only success you could sort of put down to Boris this week is... Um, Don't say it. Is he, is he really going for a second edition of Shameless? Oh, I see. Right. Shameless. All get, you know where they sort of secretly film things, and then a couple of years later they release it as a documentary? Well, <laughs> if he was going for Shameless, he couldn't be doing a better job. Could couldn't he? be doing a better job. Doing an excellent job there, Bodge. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, he's unsure. He doesn't know whether it's a compliment or not. But he, he probably thinks it's probably a compliment because everybody loves me. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Stay offended. Ian texts, did these greedy MPs have one or two pay rises last year during the pandemic? Well, I think it was much, much more than that, wasn't it? A, a pay rise, that is that sounds like peanuts compared to what they've uh, managed to pull off. They threw up into the air hundreds of billions of pounds of our money to cascade over the um, upturned expectant faces of the regime's friends, enablers and donors. It's called trickle-down economics. Tony Tex, Ken Clark quotes, Boris Johnson couldn't run a whelk stall to save his life, let alone the country. I wouldn't uh, leave him in charge of running a bath. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, Abingdon. Hello, Dean. Hello, Nick. Good evening to you. Dean. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm wondering whether, you, like people were saying, oh, nothing could touch Boris, but it can, because if you look at the... the it was a Tory stronghold in the last election just gone, mm -hmm. and they lost, oh, quite dramatically, they lost their uh, followers, if you like. Yes. Um, and so it was reduced to about, I don't know, I, I can't remember whether it was reduced to about four... Hundred or something like that. It's something stupid. It was. And they lost about <laughs> four thousand votes. <laughs> something so <it's> stupid. <laughs> something stupid, the, Bodger. Yeah, sure. um, yes. I can't remember the actual figures, Nick. Well, I have them uh, in the palm of my hand, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So leave it with me. Yeah, I'll leave it with you, mate. All right. Thanks a lot, Dean. Oliver Dowden has hailed the Conservative Party's victory in the old Bexley and Sidcup by-election. As a uh, as a tremendous victory, he warned a reduced majority shows the government must focus and get on with delivery. <laughs> delivery. I mean, the Conservative Party have been in power for eleven years. Exactly how long does it take to deliver? You could have sent a parcel to Neptune in the time it's taken this lot to deliver. There is no delivery date. There's nothing to deliver other than hope and mendacity. Hope is for tomorrow. Always tomorrow. Mendacity delivered fresh every day. Thank you. In the Conservative safe seat, Bodger, Johnson and the Tories were given a bloody nose, apparently, according to the papers. Even the Mail said this. After their majority was slashed from almost 19,000 to less than 4,500. Yeah, but, there's, but there is one figure that is, um, the, in my mind, the most important. And it's not that one. Shadow uh, Solicitor General Ellie Reeves said the 10.3% swing to Labour was fantastic. What? Well, as in science fiction. And if replicated at a general election, Labour would be within reach of forming a majority government. Yeah, never mind about that. What's incredible is that 11,189 of the good people of old Bexley and Sidcup are so thrilled with how everything is going that they think their best choice is to carry on just like this. Incredible. I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it, Bodger? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we Even think? he can't believe it. So it was the Conservatives, 11,189. That was uh, practically 52% of the vote. 52% of the people in Sidcup and um, Old Bexley are thrilled with the way it's uh, going. Can you believe that? No. Labour on uh, about 30%. Reform on about 65 Greenies, 3.8. 3.8 for the Greenies. Groovy. And the uh, Lib Dems, you, you remember the Lib Dems, don't you? No. They used to be a thing a while ago. Just under 3%. Wow. Um, UKIP got 0.85%. I'm a nutcase. <laughs> uh, 
the attor- here's the most important the number as far as um, uh, my eyes are concerned. Turnout, 33.6%. What? 33.6%. Could anybody care? No. Not really, no. So the swing don't make no never mind. Nobody could be bothered to show up. Even the um, the the very very conservative old Bexley and Sid Cuppers couldn't be bothered to show up to vote for their uh, their own favourite party. Thirty three point six percent, which means that if everybody in old Bexley and Sid Cup that supported the Labour Party had shown up, if a hundred percent of the Labour supporters in old Bexley and Sid Cup had shown up, they would have won. Voting should be the law in this country. It should be against the law to not vote. That's true. It must be. I mean, there's only 4,500 in it. A turnout of 33.6%. That is pathetic. So the Tories would not have won if everybody else who opposed them showed up to vote. But they couldn't because, I don't want to, it's so boring. Uh, who else can we vote for? You know, oh God, all these excuses that people give. And, and it's an excuse because they don't want to leave the house because it's a bit chilly or it's a bit windy or I don't want to or there's something on the telly. Look, it's the Antiques Roadshow. Or Celebrity Antiques Roadshow. Celebrity Antiques Roadshow on ice. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> Let's have... Um Ashford. Hello, Milan. Hi, Nick. Are you OK? Yes, fine. <laughs> I'm just worried about you. Um, I was going to ask you a question, but before I do that, it's like, what is Johnson good for? So he is absolutely fantastic at his powers of seduction. Oh. I, the way... <laughs> I don't mean his private life. I mean uh, the electorate. Because oh. he... I don't know how he does it. He seems to always seduce the electorate, and it's it's like a scene from the Night of the Living Dead, where <laughs> it's like the like zombie fashion. Right. They will just follow. It, I mean, we have talked about this before, but it it has turned into a creepy cult. Yeah, Johnson can do anything, and uh, his fans will just will just lap it up and go, "Yes, yeah, that's fine." That's Amazing! Fine. It, it's just beyond belief, really. I mean, at this point, how me- how much evidence do you need? There's 150,000 dead people. We have the, we have the worst death rate, coupled with the worst economic hit of practically any other country on earth. In fact, we may be actually the worst of any country on earth. And people are still nodding sagely and thinking, "Yep, things are going just great." Carry on. Yeah, I think we're just marginally better than Brazil. And in Brazil, I think they've <laughs> launched congressional hearings against the uh, the leader. Yeah. Where nothing's happened here. <laughs> Nothing at I mean, all. No evidence. Lack of evidence, you see. Yeah, and it's not even COVID. I mean, you've got loads of other... I mean, don't, don't get me started on Brexit, which is an absolute disaster, like, this year. But I think uh, what, we... what you mean is that everything is going completely fine. <laughs> And then that leads me on to the... Can I... Can I ask something controversial? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, so now and then, I, I listen on YouTube, YouTube, mm. um, compilations of you and, and calls with uh, Brexit voters. I've got to ask, are they actually true? Are they actually real people? Because more surely people can't be that misinformed. Unless I'm, well, I don't really know what, um, you're to- what, what it is you're talking about. There's, cl- there's compilations of me talking to Brexit people. Um, yeah, Brexit voters phoning your radio station and oh. then coming up with utter nonsense. And uh, don't you, you know you, this is the greatest country in the world, and we uh, we want to get our democracy back or something? Yeah, like and that. yeah, and stuff like oh, it's fine with the WTO deal. It's mm. fine, you know. It, 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 was, it was fantastic in the 1700s or <laughs> in the times. Yeah. And we won and, the war. And, and Always with the war. Death. Yeah, and, and you're trying desperately to provide them with details, and they've got they're no interest in it at all. And I right. thought, surely they can't be that misinformed. So, but are they real people? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have any knowledge of those clips. Um, I haven't looked <laughs> up myself on the internet in a good long while, but um, if I do, then um, I'm in for a big surprise, no doubt. Yeah, but I, I expect that they probably are. Have you seen any good films lately? 
Um, well, I went to see the, uh, the the new James Bond film at the uh, cinema, and uh, was that a good film? No, 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 no. I couldn't wait for it to be over. It was oh. awful. It, it did go on for a long time, didn't it? Yeah, about three days. <laughs> it, it just <laughs> never seemed to end. It, it, oh, yeah. God, it was terrible. I mean, if it was a great film, then I don't really care how long it goes on for. But uh, not that. Not for me. No, thank you. Appreciate it, but uh, not for me. Wow, that that's controversial. I, oh, I thought it was good, but not not great. But mm. yeah, it did it did drag on for. A long... I think he's only that's... done two good films. Uh, has um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the, yeah, the the first one, Casino Royale, and um, Skyfall, both of which were yeah were actually really good, and the others were just weak, and it seemed like they rushed through them and. Didn't have much of an idea or, or budget, really, for the, the special defects. So my money is on uh, the new Mission Impossible. That's what I'm hoping for. New Mission Impossible? I, 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 I don't know about this. Yeah, well, is there well, one coming out next, next well, year? Well, it should be pretty soon. I mean, Tom Cruise seems oh. to have been filming it for about three years. I mean, it's been oh. all, all the way through the, uh, the, you know, the invisible menace from uh, China. <laughs> and, uh, I suspect all the Mission Impossible films are absolutely amazing. I, I think that, not all of them. Um, no, the second one no? was uh, was not worth <laughs> seeing twice. But um, they seem to be getting better. Actually, the last one, whatever that was uh, called, was uh, absolutely <laughs> was absolutely no one knows the order. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was absolutely excellent. The last one. Look it up on the World Wide Web. <laughs> In Milan, I got to go. Um, but thanks for that. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three friday saturday sunday night at 10 nick abbott lbc leading britain's conversation lbc with nick abbott this is absolute tosh uh, rob tex what's the latest on farage's return to uh, frontline politics any idea um well i have no information other than the arguments that ukip stands for aren't valid if you say so nige Anne-Marie says, uh, Boris is very good at supporting Peppa Pig. If I was Peppa Pig, I'd vote for him. Peppa Pig World. Peppa Pig World is... Uh, is it has... Uh, yes, uh, yes. Peppa Pig is the right answer. <coughs> Peppa Pig. Gary Tex, if Bodge does get done, who's going to pay the 100 quid fine? <laughs> you know, well, we will. The Information Commissioner's Office fined the UK government £500,000 this week for disclosing details of the recipients of its so-called New Year's Honours list, which reportedly included uh, Elton John and former leader of the Conservative Party, Ian Duncan Smith, the regulator said on Thursday. The regulator came down hard on them. Half a million pound uh, fine, can you believe that? So who pays the half a million pound fine then? we do and where does it go absolutely no idea they they find the government a half a million pa- no they didn't they find they find us poor dopes who pay taxes have you ever heard of anything so ridiculous in your life york hello jan hello nick how are you i'm great mate how are you i'm very good thank you no thank um, you no Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now that that party at number ten, mm. uh, there's also a policeman at the door, isn't there? Yes. I wonder why. I wonder why he didn't realise there was something going on. He could have arrested a lot of them, couldn't he? he? Yeah, he could have um, yeah. th- thrown Un- a net over the entirety of them. Yeah, unless, of course, they all sneaked in the back way. What do you think? No, I think they probably think- all um, tipped their hat to him as they passed, knowing that they were beyond uh, the law. Yeah, and it's, it's not it's not just it? one either. There's uh, there's usually two or three, and every time I go by, which is at least three or no, actually six times a week, they're always hmm. standing at the gates with uh, you know bristling with weaponry, yeah. talking to each other. I mean, yeah. they're never not talking. How can you be standing at the gates for, I don't know, eight hours or whatever it is that their shift is, and be talking continuously? I've never seen them not talking. I literally mm. go by six times a week and they're always talking to each other. What about what? <laughs> what are they talking uh, about? God knows, I don't. It's, uh, I don't know. And um, you know that um, vaccine minister that um, I think Mike was talking about her? Mm. She was on question time the other night. Yes. Did you see it? No, I did not. 
No. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, well, she was trying to explain about this party. Yeah, I saw, the, I saw the clips. Yeah, yeah. she wasn't, she wasn't there, there, but was absolutely certain that no rules had been broken. That, yeah, yeah, sure. That's right. No rules were broken. Yeah. They must it's have amazing, given, isn't it? It is incredible. They must have given each and every single minister who was going on TV or radio the same set of instructions. Just keep intoning this phrase, no rules have been broken. If you just keep saying it over and over again then uh, yeah. poor dopes like me with small minds will start to believe it. Exactly, yeah. And what they're saying now is that, um, well, Boris says you can have a party this year, mm. but others are saying you can't. So yeah. what do you say? What do you do? <laughs> I, heard that, um, I heard that Matt Lucas clip again this morning, and it's so funny. Have you heard it? No. The one where he's taking Johnson off, you know. Uh, you no. know, wh- Wear a mask, or don't wear a mask. Mm. Work from home, but uh, uh, go to work if you can. Yes. You know, that kind of thing. Right. You want, to li- you want to listen to it. It's so funny. I most certainly do not, Jan. All right. And I, so, and I will <laughs> not look it up. That sounds like homework to me. Well, it is a bit of homework, but it's worth it, really, right. you know. Okay. So funny. Mm. All right. Yeah. Thanks for the tip, Jan. Yeah. Cheers, my dear. Uh, yep. Okay. Tara, 0345 6060 973. Homework at the weekend. But, Miss. John emails Christmas in Trafalgar Square due to uh, government cutbacks on branches. Seriously, that tree is such a sad and pathetic example. It's embarrassing that that is, in effect, our national tree. Just look at, look at a picture. It doesn't even have to be this year. It could be last year or the year before. Any year. Pick any year and look at the Rockefeller tree in New York, which is, um, you know, by extension, America's tree. And it is incredible. You virtually need sunglasses to look at it. But ours, I've never seen such a sad and pathetic affair. It's just, um, it just looks so weak. They could have dolled it up with some lights. I mean, they had a crane up there to put the... The, that sad show that they've got on it at the moment. So why couldn't they have just... If, if you'd just gone to um, to um, Ryman's, you could have picked up a box for 40 quid. It would have looked better than that. Stella Tex, how about using Boris Johnson as a loo brush? Well, that's just offensive, Stella. Sarah says, my boyfriend dumped me by text three weeks ago, completely out of the blue, and I just wanted to say, each Friday and Saturday, you stopped me moping about and made me laugh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about uh, your boyfriend dumping you by text. That's that's a weak thing to do. But um, appreciate the thought there, uh, Sarah. Cheers, my dear. Paul says, Bodger could be used as a performance art installation on the spare plane. <laughs> This is a good idea. Bodger could be used as a performance art installation on the spare plinth in Trafalgar Square. That's not bad, is it? We could just stick him up there and have him entertain us. Be funny! Uh, Perhaps named Shabby Man in shabby attire with shabby hair keeps on partying, says Paul. Yeah, he could take his own uh, stereo up there and, uh, you know, do the disco dancing. Anybody want to see Boris Johnson disco dancing? No. Oh, okay then. No music. I could actually see that. That's a good idea. We could um, concrete his feet to the plinth. (laughs) And keep him out there day and night for our amusement. Uh, Hands up who thinks that's a good idea. Zach emails, George Freeman could go back to making his grills. They're great. Kevin says, the Norwegians give us that tree uh, every year for our support in World War II, but Comrade Abbott thinks the tree is bad. Everybody that's seen it thinks the tree is bad, Kevin. Keep up. I know that they give it to us for our help in World War II, but um, it seems like their memory of uh, that assistance is waning. They must be really upset with us for some reason or other. Or maybe it shrunk on the way over. That's probably it, isn't it? It got wet and shrunk. Trees are known for doing that. Oh, look at the time. (laughs) Yak, 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 and I forget where I am. 0345 6060 973, text 84850. Email nickA at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Uh, By the way, this show and the one tomorrow gets stuck up the internet as a podcast. Uh, If you... um, 
Uh, we take the news and the ads out. It takes less time to listen to. You'll use less electricity, so you won't have to sell all your Christmas presents to pay your fuel bill. And you can thank me later. No, wait. I've changed my mind. You can thank me now. Thank you. Uh, ask for it by name on an internet near you. Nick Abbott, The Whole Show. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. What number are you calling from? 0345 This anonymous text says, Hope you are well. Can we send you a Christmas gift? Of course. Just as long as you don't need the address. James says, I read this week that to save money, the Cabinet are reducing the money spent on stationery. Johnson has insisted on having his own, but the Cabinet have to share. It's one ruler for him and one ruler for everybody else. A uh, listener with a material... This says, uh, Bodge is good at building buses out of crates and is probably the only person in the world who still partakes in this pastime. Nobody has ever partaken in that pastime. I don't believe he was telling the truth about that. Liar! Building buses out of crates. Oh, please. St Ives. Hello, Brenda. Hi, Nick. Brenda. Nick, your description of the tree in Trafalgar Square just made me really hoot with laughter. I think it's a dig from the Nor- Norwegians. Must say. be. I mean, yeah. they've, they've got well, better trees than... A dying, uh, uh, dead tree yes. to signify the state of your country. <laughs> they've got the better, other thing I wanted uh, uh, to say... Uh, 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 they've got better trees than that in Norway. That must be true. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing I wanted to say is um, I watched Question Time last night and this Maggie Troop, mm. the new vaccine uh, so, minister, yeah. what a wet, unbelievable... Person, she was destroyed by Theo Fetitas, Fetitas, and the um, previous secretary, a uh, Labour secretary of state for housing. What's her name? Thang Dam. She destroyed her. This woman, this Maggie Troop, she honestly she couldn't put two words together. And all she said, the other lady said, she was making excuses all the time. Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, what? Where did she? Where did they get her from? She was a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, she would, uh, uh, Theo was talking about the high streets and the demise of the high streets. And she said, "We all need to support our local shops." I make sure I shop in my local shops. And Theo said, "You're lucky to have a shop. Why don't? Why hasn't the government reduced the business um, the business rate? Yes, and taken off the VAT?" And she had no answer for anything, Nick. She was a disaster. Well, she she fits right in then. Maggie Troop. Mm. Troop okay. of what? <laughs> wet, wet, wet. All right, <laughs> thanks a lot, Brenda. Wet, wet, wet. Rock and roll! D tweets, I guess he could uh, power a wind turbine with all his bluster and get some electricity to those 10,000 northern houses. S- seriously, are those people still without electricity? I mean, that is just embarrassing, isn't it? How has that happened? I mean, can you believe how awful that must be? Well, they wouldn't be able to heat their homes. They wouldn't be able to cook. They've got no lights. They've got no television. (laughs) What do they do with themselves? Martin says, here in France, I have to pretend I'm German to avoid everybody falling on the floor with laughter when when I'm asked where I'm from. Just tell him you're from Scotland, Martin. You'll be just fine. Uh, Elsm- Elsmere, Michael. Hi, Nick. You're all right. Yes, good. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. You were asking what's Boris Johnson good for? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of thinking he was quite good for the Russians. You know, they hired him to dance for them in tennis shorts. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> well, that's an interesting way of putting it. To dance for them in tennis shorts. Yet, yeah, absolutely nobody wants to see that, Bodger. Put it away. I mean, if you wanted to play tennis, maybe Andy Murray on, or Tim Hanneman would be available. Yeah, come you know, on, Timmy. It's just a guess. Mm. Yeah, but, but that's the other thing. You know how, how they decided to cut free school meals? 
Yes. You know, and kids like really need it, and like, yeah, maybe that's what he's good for. You know, running around, taking smashing food smashing from children's plates mouths. out of children's foods. Yeah. yeah. Right. And all the right wing commentary out was like, hey, the parents should be responsible, and they mm-hmm. like went after Marcus Rashford. I, I think yeah. that was a guy from Spectator who was like. Hey, your father left when you were young, didn't he? <laughs> maybe, maybe you're the problem, you know. And yeah. you say, okay, so if kids have really bad parents, as as we've seen this week, which is horrible, then it's the kids' fault. That's like the Tory policy, you know. I think a society them, is judged on how they treat the poorest and the most needy among them, which doesn't say very much about us. Yeah, you know what Boris eats? He gets food parcels from a donor while mm-hmm. he's smacking plates out of kids' hands. That's right. what he is. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty vivid image you've uh, left us with there, Michael. Thanks for that. David Se- uh, David texts, following this week's revelation that hospital renovations would be referred to as brand new hospitals. That wasn't this week. That's, that's ages now they've been uh, trying that one on. Can you believe that? I mean, uh, really, the, the shamefacedness of it. And, and, and what's worse is, or is it, is it even worse? Yeah, I think it is. What's worse is when they get found out, they just blast through our knowledge that they are being mendacious and just keep repeating the lie. The revelation that hospital renovations are to be referred to as brand new hospitals. And then you will put that to a minister or bodge himself and he will, and that they'll, he'll take that on and say, ah, oh, yes, well, you know, we've got 40 new hospitals. And you'll say, no, uh, Minister, it's it's not 40 uh, brand new hospitals, is it? Because, uh, you know, renovations are to be referred to as brand new hospitals. And, and they'll say, ah, oh, yes, well, we have 40 new hospitals. Like they're just robots programmed to say just the one thing, regardless of what comes at them. Like androids. Affirmative. He says, I am currently re- re- rebuilding my entire flat by painting the skirting board in the living room and fitting a towel rail in the bathroom, but I am not holding a housewarming party in my brand new house, just having a few friends round where we will have nibbles, drinks and games, but it's not a party, says David. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's almost like a wartime spirit, isn't it? It's uh, like, it, for always incoming, they're lobbing stuff at us on a daily basis, and uh, we're grinning and bearing it. It's the British way. Patrick says, regarding our great leader, he surely deserves some credit as on top of uh, the job of PM. Think of all the people he must be helping in his ongoing MP's surgery. <laughs> I bet he couldn't find Uxbridge with a sat-nav. Hey, people, you good people of Uxbridge, are you completely satisfied in every way, shape and form with the decision that you've made? Um. They're thinking about it. Wendy emails, what did you eat for breakfast? Well, I'm glad that you asked that, uh, Wendy. That's going to be the topic from now until the end of the show. What I ate for breakfast. Porridge with bits in it. In it. Seeds and nuts and um, prunes. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Prunes has a major effect on me. I love it. Sam Tex, Bodger is good for playing dress-up like a nursery child. That's about it, really. Yeah, he just bombs about the place and um, dresses up as um, as different people and pretends to do their job for the, f- for the purpose of being photographed. <laughs> what is that about? I mean, really... Who comes up with this stuff? Ah, oh, yes, uh, Prime Minister, you, uh, we know that you have the most important job in the country, but what we're going to have you uh, do today is uh, go and pretend to milk a cow. Why? Other than to boost his popularity with an amusing photograph. Or he goes and wields um, uh, some, um, uh, uh, some mechanic's tool. And then you look at the photograph and play spot the spanner. Edward text, voting should be compulsory. You will always get my vote as king of LBC. You hear that, Steve? <laughs> so if I'm king of LBC, what, what does that make Steve Allen? Don't say it. Sam text, Bodger is good for... I read that. Julie says, I'm having trouble working out my weekly grocery bill. Can you ask the business minister if he could help me and clearly explain things? Thanks. 
Yes, what are the numbers, Zayfad? Uh, if you do the numbers, so just really a couple of things. One, um, 500 and about 100 million, um, and of course, an additional 5.4 billion pounds. Uh, now, um, you've got to remember, one, you know, 5 million already, and um, a number of almost 10,000, including uh, 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 86%, 5 million, and of course, over 50%. And, and what, what I'm saying is you know, an additional 162 uh, million. And it, that comes, by the way, on top of the 500 million. Now, um, 36 billion, uh, of which 5.4 billion, and um, probably one of the biggest of 500,000, of um, over 16,000, massive, half a million. And one, um, you know, uh, two, um, uh, 11, um, one, 1. 1.7 billion, and then 1.4 billion, 250,000, um, 6 million, basically 3.1 billion. Right now, that's a big number, and, and that's exactly what I'm delivering. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. You're joking. 0345 6060 973. Alice says that uh, Bodger is good for hot air, which would um, drive wind uh, terminal, not terminals, turbine, turbines, wind turbines. You know who knows a lot about wind? I know a lot about wind. He does. Al says Spectre is the best Bond film. No, it isn't. It could possibly be the worst. What are you talking about, Al? Maybe Al has only seen one Bond film. That could be the only explanation I can find. Spectre was a terrible film. Doesn't it surprise you that when you go and see a film and it's really, really bad, that you think, at what point did should have somebody have raised a finger of complaint and said, you know what, this is rubbish. Let's not do it. Let's not spend a year of our lives and a hundred million pounds on making something that's not very good. Let's do something else instead. But no, they, it's, it's like, you'd think that they'd know. I mean, they've read the script. They know what's coming up. It's not a surprise. They're making it. It just amazes me that people can make really, really, really bad films for a massive amount of money. Uh, you, you think that, uh, you know, at some point along the way, maybe an executive, you know, executives, no! an executive could come in and say, uh, you know what, this this is just awful. I mean, the script's terrible. Just rewrite the script. I mean, writers are ten a penny, which is pretty bad. I mean, you know, because they're the people that make the stories up, but they don't get paid nothing. So just chuck that one out, get another one in. Write a better story with better... Um, uh, you know, a dialogue. But no, they don't. They just carry on with... Uh, and it's rubbish. And, and they must have known that it was rubbish while they were doing it. That must be pretty deflating as an actor to be in a th- film that you know is rubbish while you're doing it. And then, worse, worse you've got to go out afterwards and sell it. Oh, no. You've got to go on television programmes and uh, pretend that it's uh, really, really great. Bridget tweets, should elections with less than 55% turnout be declared null and void? Uh, Well, I think that it should be the law that everybody should vote. Why not? I mean, just make it easy. I mean, if people just cannot be bothered to go to their local school or church, which must be just at the end of their road. It's not like America. You don't have to drive for four hours and then uh, stand in a queue in the burning hot heat or the freezing cold for 12 hours. It's just down the road, and there's nobody there when you go there. You're in and out in about 30 seconds. But if you can't be bothered to do that, then, um, you know, put it on their phones or or make it postal or just anything. But it should be the law. I mean, if if Australia can do it, why can't we? I don't get it. But um, in the absence of uh, any other uh, option, then, uh, yeah, all right, why not? Elections with less than 55% turnout should be declared null and void. Uh Null void James texts uh, heard some of the vox pops for the Bexley by-election the zombies were everywhere (laughs) the zombies were everywhere he says one guy actually said Boris has had his ups and downs but I don't think anyone else could have done better oh my god the amount of times I've heard that variations on a theme 
Oh, he's doing his best. Painful. I don't think anyone else could have done better, as though they have no other information of anywhere else on the planet. Every country's done better than us. Apart from possibly uh, Brazil and um, some countries in the third world, but it's not their fault. But it's absolutely blooming well our fault. Or, more accurately, his fault. <laughs> uh, yes, precisely. Cab for Bodger. <laughs> James says, heard, no, 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 I've read that. Just read that just now. Daryl text, the flaw in your plan that voting should be compulsory is that people who have no knowledge of politics would still have to vote and they might as well choose a candidate at random and then we'd end up being run by a complete bunch of clowns. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh... Archie says, when asked by the Met, when asked why the Met was not investigating certain festive acti activities at number 10 last year during COVID restrictions, Cressida Dick pointed out that she had no power to do so as no complaint had been received on the matter. Although this oversight by the Labour Party was duly remedied, is this performance of an effective opposition or is it indicative of an organisation doomed to total to political obscurity in perpetuity? Well, she, Cressida Dick was asked that question on the very excellent Nick Ferrari show on this station. And she just sat there and said, well, I haven't received a complaint. <laughs> and Nick Ferrari said, well, I'm sitting here complaining. And she said, oh, well, I haven't heard any complaints. I haven't seen any complaints. And, and Nick was saying, well, I'm, I'm telling you, this is a complaint. What are you going to do about it? She said, well, I haven't heard any complaints. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. We now live in a country where you can get locked up for 51 weeks just for expressing an opinion that the government doesn't like. And yet any, anything that the government does that is um, excused because of a lack of evidence. Well, if you don't look for the evidence, you won't find it. I think you'll find that that is true. You don't have to be Columbo to figure that out. If you don't look, you won't find. That was priceless, though. I mean, that, uh, that clip is uh, on the World Wide Wait. Nick Ferrari talking to Cressida Dick. Well, I haven't, I haven't had a letter. Yeah, I'm, I'm complaining right now. I'm sitting in front of you. I'm, I'm telling you that I am making a, a, a complaint. Well, I haven't heard any complaints. <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> uh, her epaulettes, are, are, by the way, they're, there's something wrong with her shirt, or they don't fit right or something, but they, they seem to be drooping down the front of her. Aren't epaulettes supposed to sit on your shoulders? But, yeah, you know, like like that's the most important uh, part of uh, this story. Wonky epaulets. John emails this time next week. How many cases of a new variant will the government say there are in Britain? A few hundred, a few thousand, or not enough to stop Christmas parties? <laughs> oh my cron, we're doomed. Christmas parties. All right, I'll get into that in a minute. You know, I've been, um, this is apropos of nothing at all, but I've, uh, all this year I've been writing up um, uh, like a story of how the year has gone, month by month, um, putting some of the, uh, the juiciest stories in there with the idea that I'll stick it in a book with the A to Z that we do over Christmas and I'll um, squirt it up the internet. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going cough. I'll squirt it up the internet um, just after New Year when the A to Z is finished and then you will get the complete story of this miserable year in one book uh, which will be less than the price of a cup of coffee as, as cheap as they allow it that's what i'll stick it out as hang on i'm gonna cough again eh, shh. <laughs> i had no idea i was gonna do that <laughs> sometimes i surprise myself anyway um oh a story came out this week oh it was just absolute perfection but I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. It, it's brief, but it's just delicious from start to finish. <laughs> you may have in mind the story that I am referring to. I'll get to that in a while. But you remind me, if uh, you know, in case I forget. Stephen says, I've asked my wife to get me the new self-published memoirs of Brexit hardman Mark, Mark Francois, Spartan Victory for Christmas. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> that doesn't need any comment from me. <laughs> None at all. Amusing, yes? Yes. Yeah. He certainly is. Lucy emails, he'd make a, he, as in Bodger, would make a good environmentally friendly heater with all that hot air he seems to have in abundance. Failing that, a crash test dummy. Yeah, for, for a circus clown car. This says, Boris Johnson is quite good for giving you lots of material. Well, I suppose so, yeah. I mean, before uh, Bodger, the person that was giving me a lot of material was uh, you-know-who. Oh, shut up! Yes, Donny, talking about you. You giant orange numpty. The man you're married to is a giant orange numpty, Melania. I don't care. She's not that bothered. Sanj Tech, not Super Sanj. No, Sanj. Not Sanj, Sanj. Sanj Tech, he's doing a great job as ringmaster for the circus he has in power. For the circus he has in power. Does that make sense? Sad to say this is a cult. He can do no wrong no matter what he does. Well, there's a certain um, section of the public that seems to be uh, perpetually prepared to be perplexed by his uh, PAW act. Not perplexed exactly, more um, uh, like they're stricken by it. As though they're hypnotised. Can you fool enough of the people enough of the time? Yes. Apparently so, yes. As painful as that is to admit, it appears to be correct. James texts, Bodger definitely has a second job, dressed up as Peppa Pig in Peppa Pig World. Peppa Pig World. Peppa Pig World is... Uh, is it has... Uh, yes, uh, yes. Peppa Pig? Is the right answer. Very good. He's the leader of our country. Can you believe that? No. It's... Where did we go wrong? I blame us. Malcolm texts, the reason that Christmas tree is so gappy is because they needed uh, spaces to hang all the flags in. It's a rubbish tree. It's really quite embarrassingly bad. I mean, every year that tree gets put up and people think, mm. because you're expecting something fantastic. It's like I said, I've, I've, I've said this several times now, just dial it up on the worldwide weight. The New York Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. It's incredible. Without doubt, the best tree you will have ever seen. And they do it every single year. It's amazing in New York, which is um, vying with London for the title of best city in the world. Well, if, it's, it, if it comes down to trees, New York wins it by a mile. I mean, ours looks like something you would see in, no offence, Uxbridge. Or Staines. Ugh. <laughs> Not not Trafalgar's, not Her Majesty's Trafalgar Square. Pathetic, weak. I mean, just a national embarrassment. Norway hates us now. They can't wait until the Eurovision Song Contest to give us null point. So they gave us a, a they gave us that. Boy, they must have had a, a right laugh when they picked that out of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> st st stick that in a lorry for them. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Text eight four eight five zero. Email nick a l at lbc dot co dot uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at lbc. Eleven thirty on lbc. The news headlines with Zora Solomon. Leading Britain's conversation. LBC with Nick Abbott. Right, so what are we doing? Given we're doing a radio show, but it does remind me that I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin, which is called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Yeah. In which the delightful Carol McGiffin and I try to solve people's problems while maintaining a straight face and failing on both counts. If you would like us to solve your problems, then send it to the following address. Nick and Carol at global.com. That's N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. And prepare for a mild amount of satisfaction. <laughs> And ask for the podcast by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? Uh, we just did uh, the one that's coming out on Monday this morning. And uh, we had a bright laugh. We didn't solve many people's problems. So uh, we apologise for that. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Mostly Carol. 
Mostly her fault. I think you'll find that that is correct. But the uh, podcast is called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? If you wish to be amused and you have uh, an hour, then um, I think you'll be delighted. You'll love it. If you download Global Player, by the way, then you'll find uh, all of the podcasts that I do on that. Or just uh, do an internet search on my name, Nick Abbott Podcasts, and it will become uh, apparent as though by magic. Uh, Bodger, uh, Baz, rather, texts that the sooner Bodger and the other squatters are evicted from Downing Street, the better. Sue says, one thing that Boris Johnson seems to be consistently good at is wasting taxpayers' money. Uh, Chris says, I've got 10 sheets of nylon, 20 sheets of polyester and 30 sheets of cotton. I'm a listener with material. Oh, no. And uh, Dale says, please stop calling Bodger clown. That's what made him electable. I hate this man, (laughs) says Dale. Well, don't sit on the fence, Dale. Tell us what you think. Let's have uh, haven't Tom. Uh, Good evening, Nick. Yes, Tom. I'm challenging you about this compulsory voting system. Okay. The see, the reason we've, why we, we've got a problem at the moment is the first-past-the-post system, I don't know if you know his history, but it dates back from about 1720, when first-past-the-post, the people voted their MP in, and he was their MP in <laughs> Parliament. Yeah. which meant was that whatever he said in Parliament, the people who voted for him controlled him. What put the I mean, span among the works was when this party system came along, it instantly made that we don't have democracy, no matter what you say, we don't. We have the artificial democracy called dictatorship. Now, all you've got to say is that Can you remember a few months ago, or whatever it was, Germany had a problem. They got, their voting system was voted, and they never got a clue to the government. But I don't know if you realise that Whitehall here emphasised to Germany after the war that they must have a proper democratic voting system, and the English dictated to Germans what to do it. Then when they turn back to England, oh, no, we can't have got democracy here. No way we will stick to dictatorship. And this is why now Labour is out of the system, but Labour will not put in proportional representation. Yeah. No way. It is. For the simple reason, for the simple reason is they know that while the power they've got with dictatorship, they keep it. I think that the Labour Party you... seem to be ab- addicted to losing. Uh, the, that's just the left in general. Rather than win, which is what the right wing uh, specialise in, they, they cling on to or acquire power at any cost. Same in America, same here. The left wing, meanwhile, uh, as I've said many times, form a circular shooting squad and take each other out. They have a purity test and find themselves wanting so the right wing just step nimbly over them and um, are in power for another 11 blooming years. Yeah, well, I agree with what I heard you on saying about the... To, on, uh, what, where was it? In Sidcup or something. If they put a goat there with a blue flag on, <laughs> it'll, it'll get voted in. <laughs> yes. Well, I've often said the same up north. If they put a donkey there with a red flag on or a red rosette on it, mm-hmm. it would get in. Right. You, you, you've you've heard, I, I don't want to mention names, but uh-huh. you've heard certain people in voting saying, I want a safe seat and I'll be in a member of parliament. Yeah. But the safe seat, there's no democracy with safe seats. I don't think there's... I think, essentially, you're right. It it, it is... um, We've just lurched from one um, uh, dictatorship to the next. And the the majority of the people in this country have no say. It's a minority government. Again, another minority conservative government. They've been in power for something like two-thirds of the time since the Second World War. And they're still blaming Labour for for everything that ails the country. It's remarkable. And still, most of the people voted for other parties, but they get no say, no representation of any kind whatsoever. They just get to sh- sit down and shut up for another five years. It's, um, it, it's a terrible system that we've got, and the Labour Party absolutely should get their act together and insist on proportional representation. First, they've got to win, 
and then uh, make sure that they uh, enact proportional representation. And the, and the way to do that is, of course, at the next election, is to twin is to team up with the other parties and make sure that they don't split the left vote. Yeah, but but Nick, this this idea of mine about democracy, don't forget. Why can't we ask Prince Charles why he he, he lets his mother, which is the Queen, why she is the Queen of the United Kingdom, of which there's only twenty five percent of the United Kingdom is democratic, and that is Northern Ireland. And you know, and I know how Northern Ireland got democracy. Democracy, and what's, what's it got to in, do with Prince Charles and the Queen, though? Well, they, they are the only ones that can change it. Nick. Nobody, oh, right. can, nobody will in this country yeah. will if, change if, it. If, if, you, if you want this, head. if you want the status quo changed, I think you're going to have to look for uh, someone else uh, other than a member of the royal family. I think that the, they benefit they, from the status quo, regardless of what it is. They are head of state. Yeah. They are. If you look at it, as I say, is that United Kingdom. Is, is literally 25% democracy, 75% dictatorship. United, uh, sorry, Great Britain is 100% uh, dictatorship. And the people, I'm, I cannot believe the people will just accept it and nobody queries it. Right. <laughs> OK, leave that with me, Tom. It was a history lesson. Boring. Excellent work, Tom. <laughs> Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Yeah, the left wing just will not get their act together. They just can't do it. It's like in America, they're um, the, the left, the AOC and uh, and all that lot voting against um, Uncle Joe Biden's plans for um, you know these I think three trillion dollar uh, plan to you know give people. Uh, dental treatment and medical treatment and, uh, you know, all the rest of it. And um, oh, it's just painful to watch. The, the left wing, they, they're just so stupid. It's almost like they don't deserve to have uh, power. But most people voted for parties other than the Conservative Party last time around. And they get nothing. The most people get nothing. And my, another minority conservative government again it's a bad system it's not working for the majority of the people in this country and the only and the only parties that could actually make a change refuse to do it because they think well i'd rather run at, um, i'd rather win as emperor than have to make concessions with another party and so they lose again and people that vote uh, uh, for the left, they would vote for the Labour, the, the Labour Party, and the Lib Dems, and the Greenies, and the SNPs. The people who vote for right-wing parties, meanwhile, have pretty much just a Conservative Party. So the Conservative Party will win again and again and again and again and again. And uh, this is uh, where we are. Don't get me started. Graham texts, uh, distraught, I won't be snogging Teresa Coffey again this year. Life can be cruel, says Graham. Paul says, Johnson plays a good game of pass the contract at Christmas parties all the year round. It's always Christmas over at Bodger's place. And Ed says, Boris delivered Brexit. He should be canonised. What? <laughs> you mean strapped over the front of one? Well, that's going a bit far, Ed. Belsize Park. Judy, Judy, Judy. Hello. Judy. Um, you know you said it should be mandatory to vote. Yes. Um, and I think at the moment, people who don't vote are put down as being apathetic and just lazy and yep. too idle to mm -hmm. go. Right. Um, I feel very strongly, particularly as how many people died in order to give me and other women the vote. Yep. So I have to go always. Right. And what I would like to see is another box on the paper that says none of the above. Well, essentially, there is. I mean, you can just you can and, just and, draw well, a smiley face, and uh, no, then no, that no. will be none I'm of serious. the above. I'm serious. If they had a none of the above box, 
a lot of people, I think, I think would go, would tick that box, and instead of it being read as a spoiled paper, mm. it actually should be read out at the count. Right. That would embarrass them. Well, it would. I mean, if if people aren't going to vote because they don't think that um, any party is would would act in their interests, or they think they're all the same, or you yes. know whatever excuse that they give, if they were forced to go and vote, and one of the boxes was none of the above, and none of the above won, <laughs> I'd actually quite like to see that. I, I'd wait up until three or four in the morning to see that. But wouldn't that tell you something? Yeah, tell, tell, it'll tell you everything you need to know. I mean, I've been on to the, I've forgotten what they're called, the Electoral Commission or one yeah. of, I don't know, one of those people. Right. Um, and I have repeated it. I mean, my, my family won't come with me to the local where we vote at our local library. Why not? Because, because I make such a fuss every time I'm in there. A fuss? Yeah. Are you allowed to make a fuss? No, I'm not. I'm asked to leave usually. <laughs> and I also... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So what kind of, what, how does this fuss manifest itself? What kind of a fuss are we talking about here? Well, the fuss manifests itself because they record how you vote anyway, because they record, you know, every, um, every time you get a, a card, it has a number on it. Yeah. Well, that number is logged against the number on the back of your ballot paper, a bit like a raffle ticket. What do you win? You don't win anything, but oh. if they want to trace how you vote, or in future years people wanted to trace how you vote, hmm. it's exactly the same system as you would have on a raffle ticket. I didn't think that they had a number on the back of your ballot paper. H have a look next time. And you will find, when you go to vote, they'll hand you your ballot paper. Hmm. There will be two people sitting at the desk, and one will say to the other one, the number from the ballot paper, and right. that will be logged against your name <gasps> and your number on the electoral roll. Blimey. It goes on your permanent record. Yes. <laughs> and this is, the, this is what you explain to them every time. Every time, and every time they say, would you mind moving along, please, there's <laughs> other people in the queue. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, next, I, time, next time, Judy, you'll be spending 51 weeks in jail. Would you do me a favour? And I know you no. don't do favours to anybody, no. but next time you go and vote, mm -hmm. just check that they you will see that that is what they do. Right. And I've been told I'm neurotic, and I've been told <laughs> to... Well, I'm usually told, please leave. I mean, yeah. my husband goes 7 o'clock in the morning. He won't go with me <laughs> because I am then politely asked to move aside, right. and then somebody who is in charge mm -hmm. asks me to leave. Yeah. Wow. And then somebody outside, very stupidly sometimes, asks me, because they do an exit poll, yes. how I voted. Mm. And I then remind them that it's actually meant to be a secret ballot. Yes, that'll teach them. Well, um, I want you to keep on keeping on, Judy. Promise me you'll do that. I'll keep on keeping on, right. every time. And um, I, although it is homework, it's not no, for it's another... No, it's not homework. Well, a little bit. Like no, homework. because you'll be going to vote anyway next time, won't you? Yeah, but you're asking me to do a little bit of extra work. You, you're only asking me for, to only for yourself you, to turn a piece of paper over and look at what's on the back. No, you, no, they'll do that. You'll see them do it. Right. So you want me to just pay attention? See, now that is actual work. That requires effort on my part. But I'll do it for you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it, Judy. Okay, Cheers, thank you. Ta-da. 0345 6060 973. Thank you, Judy. Please move along. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Oh, hello. Hello. Phil tweets, I think Bodger would make an excellent draft excluder. His excess blubber could even be squeezed into extra... <laughs> could be squeezed into any cracks for extra effect. Well, that's just rude, Phil. Cully texts, I think Boris Johnson is good at setting a trend in hairstyle and he's, and his oversized jacket and trousers. Yeah, does, does that suit come in your size, Bodge? No. Uh, Cliff says, do you like gherkin in your burger? Absolutely. Yes, I do. Absolutely. I like, um, I, I want everything in the burger. 
Just make it jam-packed with absolutely everything you've got. And when I bite into it, I want it to be so full of uh, juicy loveliness that it squirts all down my front. Trev says, at least that tree doesn't block the view. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, you can see straight through it. Terrible, terrible tree this year. I mean, year after year after year, we do have terrible trees from Norway. They, they are an embarrassment. They must hate us. Or trees are very expensive, one of the two. But it's just weak. Of course, it doesn't help that it's sat right next to um, Nelson's Column, which is a very large tube in Trafalgar Square. And so if anything that's not enormous would look pathetic next to it. But this year's is really, really deeply pathetic. Yeah, thanks a lot, Norway. This text says, Just viewed the pathetic tree in Trafalgar Square. Boris asked the Norwegians for a deal on this year's tree. Norway sent him the one rejected by Macron at twice the price. Aaron text, Do you not remember Moonraker? No, I don't. We're talking about the worst James Bond film ever. Uh, it has to be Spectre, but uh, no, I don't remember. I do not remember Moonraker. Is that the one where um, Roger Moore says, <laughs> <laughs> "Well, you put your clothes back on, and I'll buy you an ice cream." Was that that one? Let's have uh, Giuseppe. Oh, and in brackets, it, just for my uh, help and assistance, in brackets it's got pronounced Giuseppe. E. Yeah, I know. I know that. Giuseppe. Like, uh, juice, apple juice, yes. that stuff there, and yeah. happy. I know. Giuseppe. Giuseppe. <laughs> How are you? Okay? Great, sure mate. Is, uh, mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, I was listening to the previous uh, caller, which mentioned the new ballot box with the uh, other box, none of the, of the above uh, could help. Yes. I was thinking about a different ballot box, um, ballot paper. Basically, uh, try to imagine you have two choices, Labour and Conservatives. I would like to put two more boxes with the negative vote. Mm. Of course, you are able to put only one cross on the ballot paper, but you can choose uh, minus Labour or minus uh, Conservative as well. OK, try to imagine the level of analysis that after the vote will uh, have this uh, idea, let's say. Um, and, uh, you know, basically you also give a judgment to the opposition uh, saying uh, rather than giving the vote to you, uh, Labour, let's say, I'd uh, like to go for a negative vote against the um, uh, Conservatives. Right. So instead of people saying, well, the reason I don't go and vote is because, well, they're, you know, what, they're all the same. Yeah, but my you voice will be heard right. if I don't want to go to vote. Yeah. Which sucks uh, the most to me? Uh, <laughs> this or that? So, right. you know what I mean? Who's Everybody the worst? Sucks, Not who's the best, who's the worst. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So, so for every vote for them, they would get a, a minus vote against them if somebody said that they were the and worst. At the end of the uh, elections, you do yeah. the plus and minus thing, and right. uh, who gets the, you know... Who's the least it, worst? I, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I would like to see this kind of uh, situation. Right, well, leave <laughs> I mean, it with like, me, Giuseppe, and I'll see what I can uh, fashion. Yeah, let's put up a sort of petition or yeah. whatever, OK? Sure, OK. <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. A petition. Anybody want to uh, sign the petition? No. No, because that would require effort, so forget it. That's not a bad idea. You can either vote for a party or against a party. And for every f uh, against vote, you get minus one for vote. And then it's the one that um, is still standing at the end, wins. Very good idea, Giuseppe, if that is indeed your name. Jim says, is it possible that amounts of money have become meaningless to this government? Well, it's become meaningless to everybody. I mean, once you start going into the millions, then people don't have any idea what that means. And then you start going into the billions, and they really, really don't have any idea what that means. And then you start talking trillions, and the people's heads explode. Shall I do the, um, the, the comparison again? Now, I can't remember, because I'm not looking at it um, in front of me, but it's more or less... A, a million seconds is seven days or 11 days, something like that. It's a small number of days. A million seconds is about 11 days. A billion seconds is 37 years. That's the difference. That's how much more a billion is from a million. We spent uh, something like 57 billion pounds on a 
phone app that doesn't work. What? How is that possible? Why aren't people in jail now? Fifty-seven billion pounds on something that doesn't work. That's about half the budget of the entire NHS. How is that conceivable that we managed to do that? And by we, I mean they. <laughs> and it's just some sort of magic trick, some feat of prestidigitation. How'd you manage it, Bodge?、Um, He doesn't know. I bet you couldn't do it again. <laughs> Might be able to do it once, but you couldn't repeat it, could you? I must tell you this,、um, and if you haven't read it yet, then it may be the story of the year. Like I said before, I'm、uh, condu- I'm completing a、uh, like a brief history of this year for inclusion in the、uh, book of the A to Z that we'll conduct over Christmas. It'll be coming out in the new year, and the the story that came in today, I'd be amazed if it was topped. I mean, it's just awful. By which I mean great. So I'll do that in the next hour, and also want to talk about Christmas parties and、uh, much else besides. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at ten. Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello, boys. Dude, Sarah texts. My husband dumped me by text. Maybe it's a Sarah thing. This is after another Sarah、uh, complained. Well, she didn't complain. She just informed us that、uh, her husband had dumped her by text. Maybe it's the same husband. Maybe it's the same Sarah. She got dumped twice. Dumped by text. What kind of a sick freak would do that? John texts. Why isn't there a Bond film called O O Seven? Well, I don't know. <laughs> We're asking me for.、Uh, Mick says、uh, Bojo applied for a job in a circus as the chief clown, and he was turned down on the basis that he was overqualified. Overqualified, Bojo. Can you believe that?、Um. Yes. And Gordon says Billy Wilder did not know "Some Like It Hot" would be a hit, nor did the studio. The first preview was a disaster. The second was a hip Greenwich Village crowd who got it, and the rest is history. You don't always know how the film will go down until it's released. Yeah, well, that is true. Some like it hot was an odd film, pretty、um, uh, trailblazing for its time. You know, and even now, and we have a, a, like a long history of men dressing up as women for comedy reasons.、Uh, but Americans don't; they just flat out don't. You remember when Queen did that video,、uh, that song, whatever that was called. And、um, Freddie dressed up as a woman and was doing the hoovering. <laughs> the American audience thought, "What? What is this?" And turned the TV off straight away. In fact, they they probably turned the TV off by shooting at it. Very upset. You know, the it, it doesn't go down well with a a certain crowd. Exactly. Ain't that right, Donny? I love the poorly educated. And they hate hate Queen for that reason. Um, but yeah, some like it hot. Very bizarre. I mean, I I, I always thought it was it was good. It, it's not the best comedy ever made, but it, it has some fantastic performances. Like mostly Tony Curtis, he's the one that carries that film for me. I always found Jack Lemmon just to be annoying in that, just kind of irritating. Just rubbed my fur up the wrong way, Jack Lemmon. I mean, I don't. I, he's been great in other things like、uh, The Odd Couple, fantastic. But in some like it hot, it was just a bit like,、mm, just get off the screen. Let Tony give give it give it to Tony Curtis a bit more, and of course Marilyn Monroe, like Jello on Springs. Ah,、uh, Clapham. Hello, Margaret. A sque- Hello. A squeal from the other side of the room. Yes, yes, Margaret. Oh, Nick. Hello. We're so excited. My son and I are just. Jumping, jumping! I'm cleaning football boots as I'm waiting for you. Ah, yes. So I'm, w- I'm、uh, running. Which, of... which position do you play? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the sideline shouting. Ah, yes. Okay, <laughs> fine. I'm good at that. <laughs> We thought that you might be interested in our sort of story.、Um, you know, bearing in mind the NHS、um, app and the COVID passports. Right. And we had a sort of situation the other week where my son had to.、Um, 
renew his passport. And it caused a problem because he had to do what you call, I don't know if you've heard of this, because, you know, we thought you're like king of 119. Um, <laughs> the verification. <laughs> yes. Have you heard that you have to do the verification? The verification? What's that mean? Yes. Like, verify your details. Confirm who you think you are. Right. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> <laughs> this was on my son's phone. Okay. And we were going to see the Chelsea ladies. Right. Play. Yeah. So we did it in the morning thinking, oh, it'll be, you know, fine. It'll be, you know, easy to do. Mm-hmm. Anyway, long story short is that um, he ha- he was presented with this verification process, which we couldn't manage. So we rang, instead of you, we rang 119. I told him that was a mistake. I said, we should have phoned Nick the night before. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, anyway, the 119 person from Liverpool um, was not in best mood, but um, <laughs> they couldn't help us. So we had did, to send did you an mention, email. Did you mention that you were going to see Chelsea ladies? Maybe that. Oh, um, I think he could tell that because right. I said, you know, he could tell that I was under pressure. You okay. know, I wasn't sounding as jolly as I am now. Right. On. And um, I said to him, you know, my son can't do it. You know, and bearing in mind he's like twenty-four, you know, first-class on the student, works for the council. Mm-hmm. I and this is my point. I'm putting across to you, so everyone who's listening can also maybe take note. That if someone like him of his ability and age group, um, and I didn't say that to make him sound like, you know, swanky swanky, but someone like him, if they can't do it, then what hope is there for other people? Right. What hope is there for a dope like me? Is that what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, me, me and you are similar sort of, you know, age group right. in, that, in that respect. How old? Um, <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> I think, are you perhaps a bit too old, and is your son a bit too old, to have his mother shouting at him from the touchlines? No, no. We we go to lots of matches together. Right. Yeah. And Nick, you haven't heard the worst part. OK, here comes the worst part. The following Sunday was the Chelsea Man U game, and I kept saying to the guy on 119, can you believe, can you believe it was next Sunday, what would have happened? And oh. you know what he said to us? <laughs> no. He said, no, wait, no, I don't. This. this is really weird Here and we go. funny. Go on. He said, because obviously you only use your passport now and again, you know, to go to a, a football match. He doesn't go to nightclubs, you know, and things like that. Um, only for the football. And the guy on 119 said, quote, if you checked it before, you would have realised that you had to do the verification. Hmm. And I thought to myself, oh, maybe I didn't hear him properly because I was like stressed and we were rushing to go. And he said, if you checked it beforehand, you would have known you had to do your verification. And I said, but we only use it now and again. It's not like we have to use it to go to work or travel on the bus. Yeah. You know, we'll do something on a regular basis. Mm. I said, am I missing something here? And I said, you know, next week we've got Chelsea Man U. You know, we need this fixed. Yes. Well, my point is, Nick, it still hasn't been fixed. Oh, my God. The 119 people email this complex feedback and my son, again, who's 24, you know, <laughs> with it, first class on a student. Yeah, first class on a student, yes. He mm-hmm. can't do it. He can't oh do my, it. So guess what, what we've got? Go Nick, you've got to wait. My, you've got to wait. Listen, guess what we've got? The year of 2021, we've got the nice paper version. Oh, on paper. <laughs> they sent you it in the post. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Isn't that brilliant? Well, I'll go to Don't the foot think? of our stairs. Hey, hey Margaret, how, how much is it? Uh, I is should it, have phoned you. Of course you should. How much is it yeah. to go and see Chelsea Man U? Well, we, we get a good deal because we get two for the price of one, and he doesn't sit in my lap because I'm his sort of carer. Right. So how much? <laughs> oh, very reasonable. How like, much? You know, the, um, for example, the Man U game was about... How much was it, Johnny? About £55? What? £55? <laughs> but that's for two tickets, Nick. Oh, OK. Well, that's and that's not bad at all. we're right down the front. Right, right up the really front. near the front. Right. Yeah. OK, well, um, yeah. no spitting, Margaret. Remember that. No chucking <laughs> coins. <laughs> so I think, you know... Um, <laughs> no, no chucking coins. And we can't bring our camera anymore, Nick. Why not? No. Can't bring a oh, camera. Oh, that's a new rule now. No cameras, no bags. No cameras? You 
But everybody yeah. in there has got a phone. Your phone is a exactly, camera. Exactly, Nick. You have hit the nail right on the right head. Right on there. the head. There you exactly. go. Exactly. Right. I mean, how ridiculous is that? We, Very. Because my, my son studies film, so he's got a nice camera. Yeah. And we've been bringing it for the last four to five years, but now you can't bring it. But everybody has yeah. their phone. Everybody has their so phones. So yeah. everybody has their phones. Doesn't yeah. make any sense yeah. to me, but then neither has no, anything else that you've said. I have my toast soap. Right. I have my toast <laughs> I have. I must have been drinking too much of your tequila. Ah, tequila, a woman after my own heart. Yay. Yes, you see, right. I know your favourite drink. Okay, all right. Um, I'm, I'm I... planning to visit. Me? I hope not. Yeah. Yes. You know, can I be your glamorous assistant for nothing? Absolutely. But thanks for asking. Oh. <laughs> Cheers, Margaret. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three wants to be my glamorous assistant for nothing at all. This is no price and worth every penny. You can text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk and if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Well, she, she was uh, full, of, full of the spirits of Christmas. Booze. Exactly. Mark tweets, seems the Trafalgar Square Christmas tree all boils down to a clerical error. The order was for a Norwegian spruce. Instead, they typed sparse. <laughs> I've never seen such a weak tree in all my life. Um, Leslie tweets. I mean, it was. It looks like a mistake. I mean, they they took that tree down to um, you know make firewood out of it, and um, they took two tree da- trees down at the same time. It's just they got mixed up. We got sent the one that should have been uh, burning right now. You should see them. The one, the magnificent one that they uh, set fire to. Oh, marvelous. Um, Adam said, would it improve turnout if you told people their vote could be cast on who they don't want in a number 10? Yeah, I think that's sort of uh, territory that we've almost covered. It's not, a, it's not a terrible idea. Who do you not want? Because people do say, I mean, the excuses, they come thick and fast when I uh, berate people for not bothering to go out and vote. And they say, oh, well... You know, they're all the same, and <laughs> they're, they're not really excited by anybody. Well, you must hate at least one of them, so vote them down. It should be a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Well, it's better than the system we've got now. Leslie says, Boris was very well paid for writing articles, over £200,000, much more than most journalists. Yeah. <laughs> What's that going to do with anything? That's... Yeah, so, so like random facts. I appreciate the facts. Thank you. Have you heard this story about the? Um, oh, it's just so good. I'll just read it exactly as written in the mail. I will not embellish it in any way, shape, or form. Army bomb squad technician. <laughs> Army bomb squad technicians were sent to a hospital after a man arrived in casualty with a World War II anti-tank shell lodged into his rectum. Medics called for specialist support after the man presented in the accident and emergency unit of Gloucestershire Royal Hospital in Gloucester when he could not remove the 57mm shell. He told medics the 80-year-old explosive device became lodged after he tripped and fell awkwardly. The military collector claimed the armour-piercing munition was from his private arsenal. (laughs) Nick Abbott on LBC. You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. Uh... Jim says, do you realise that the Labour Party have put in a formal complaint by way of letter to the Met Police about the party at Number 10 Downing Street? This means, of course, that Cressida Dick will have no option but to answer it. Should be interesting, says Jim. No, it won't. Cressida Dick will say something of the order of, well, I've looked in all of my pockets and I can't find any evidence in any of them. Case dismissed. It says, uh, without Boris, there would be an increase in unemployment among Impressionists. Well, there'd always be somebody else, though. I mean, you know, if you can do voices, then you can do anybody. I can't. I'm limited to... Paw! That's about all I can do. 
Liverpool. Hello, Steve. Hello, hello. Yes, Steve. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, long time listener, first time caller. Very ah. excited. Um, Welcome along. Just bringing up. Thank you. Um, about the way of getting a progressive alliance to effectively change the way that the uh, democracy in this country works. Yeah. I agree with you. I think I've thought about it a lot. Obviously, I'm uh, one of the groovy greenies from down in Cornwall. A groovy and, um, greenie. Groovy. Yeah. Yes, very groovy. Thanks. Um, and the way to look at it is if you had an election where the progressive parties agreed that uh, where there's a progressive um, incumbent, they stood unopposed, and in the Tory seats, you supported whichever progressive party came second mm -hmm. and the others kept out of the way. Yeah. In theory, that would get a coalition would be the Tories. Right. What you'd have to then do is you'd have to put in some kind of agreement that would say that that coalition government or that government would only stay there to pass the legislation to bring in a progressive alliance and then with the setup of a progressive alliance, uh, pro sorry, progressive um, proportional representation, sorry. Yeah. So you bring in proportional representation as the first part of legislation. You have a limited term government and then you have a general election under PR where everybody's vote counts. And then in theory, all your people that go, oh, I'm not going to vote because it's not worth it. They're all as bad as each other and my vote doesn't count. You can say, your vote will count now. Yes. So get out and vote. Right. The, I mean, the only... Go on. Oh, sorry. No, you, you, you well, go. The only thing I thought that might be a slight snag on the progressive thing is the um, the SNP in Scotland, because it's kind of weirdly in their interest. The more the Tories are in power and the more damage the Tories do, <laughs> the more yeah. they're kind of rubbing their hands together in glee. Right. So that you would, in, in theory, you still include the SNP, Ampli, Cymru, and Minterno in Cornwall down mm. in the progressive camp and if you could get that agreement they just say look stand aside for this one general election and then we can the, the ultimate goal will be proportional representation as soon as we possibly can mm. and then we'll have democracy forever well it makes perfect yeah. sense to me but um fortunately i think that um the leader of the labor party won't do it because he thinks that he can win outright and then uh, mm. you know rule as emperor but um it's, it's just not going to happen <laughs> Well, yeah, that that is the problem. But then, as you said, they've only won what, a third of the time since yeah. the war. And for all the blind optimism, and especially if Scotland get independence, they're really up against it with the numbers of just the English and Wales constituencies. And, you know, it, it, but they, I, I think with PR, Ed Miliband probably would have won. You know, it just seems that they're shooting themselves in their foot with this obsession of, like, we are the only real valid opposition. Mm. The way everything's split so much now, I mean, the, the Greens, are, you know, we're, we're rising, you know, arguably better than the Liberal Democrats, better than the Liberal Democrats in Bexley the other night. Yeah, you went and from they, uh, being the, the sort of 2 or 3% party to, in some uh, polls, being the 10% party. And people that vote Green in a first-past-the-post situation, they pretty much know it's unlike, unless you're in Brighton Pavilion, it's unlikely yeah. you're going to win. But there's the argument that it's like every Green vote that's cast puts pressure on Labour to take on more and more green policies because unless you really get onto the green message, the Greens are always going to take your votes away. So right. in a weird way, young, uh, it, yeah, without being too cliched about it, it does tend to be younger people, mm -hmm. the demographic, I kind of think, well, I could vote for a party that, you know, puts the green agenda as sixth on their manifesto or I yes. can vote for the ones who put climate change first and that's got more of an influence. But right. if I had PR then everybody's actual opinion would count and you might find people more keen to go and vote. Right, exactly. And what, what's that interesting is that if you, I mean, you mentioned demographics. If you take from the EU referendum and the last general election, yeah. if you take out the older people over, I think, 50, mm -hmm. 55, then, it, the, the, you know, the, the retired and the uh, therefore economically inactive, if you take mm -hmm. out the older vote... Jeremy Corbyn would be our Prime Minister and we would not have left the European Union. It's it's the it's, yeah. older people that have put us into this position. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but they vote. That's the thing. They exactly. always vote. Precisely. I, mean, I remember in the, in the Brexit, run up to the Brexit referendum, I was on a council in Cornwall and I was talking to Tories who were keen Brexiteers. And one of them summed it up. He said, our Brexit... Because we're... 
in in the run up, everyone thought it'd be mad to vote for it. You know, you know, there's no way people are going to actually win Brexit. It'll be tight, maybe. But I knew that, I knew that they would win for, for yeah, the, possibly I, the reason that you're about to explain. Go on. Yeah, he he actually looked me in the eye and he said, "The point is, all the Remain voters you think of might vote, might forget about it, mm. might go out that way." Yes. Night. He said, "Every Brexiteer will battle through a zombie apocalypse." Exactly to vote. right. Precisely what I said multiple times at the time. I knew it was going to happen. People who wanted to leave the European Union were single issue obsessives who would vote even if they died doing it. Everybody else who was perfectly okay with how things were, well, they might do if it's nice and if they yeah. remembered yeah. and they have other things to do. And, they, and they, it wasn't front of mind for them. That's why I knew that uh, the Leave yeah. side would win. All right. And good they'd, had, and they'd had 15 years practice building their arguments. Uh, right. If, um, and we as Remainers were like, well, why would you want to do that? That's a daft thing to <laughs> yeah. do. And then they'd go, yeah, but sovereignty, fish, mm, passports. Fish, well, yeah. Anyway, yeah. That, that battle's fought. But maybe uh, that kind of plan for a progressive alliance to bring in Paul's reputation might change politics and make it a bit more inclusive. Right. Okay, good idea. Thanks a lot, Steve. Are you listening, Keir Starmer? No. No, he's not listening. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Nice idea, but, uh, you know, better luck next time. Uh, Nige Tex, have you seen the clip of Bodger cleaning a chair with David with a David Attenborough commentary comedy gold? <laughs> no, I haven't, but I know the clip that you're talking about. It can only be the clip where, um, for some strange reason, this is one of those uh, times where, where Bodger goes on a, a jaunt in order to get his photograph taken doing somebody else's job. And <laughs> they gave him the job of cleaning a chair. I mean, you know, sort of... Uh, um, a de um, germifying it, you know, squirting it with uh, cleaning fluid and then wiping it off. And he did look like a gorilla doing it, yeah. So, I that's probably the, the clip you're talking about. I know exactly what you mean. Angela tweets just looked up the Rockefeller Christmas tree. You're right, it's incredible. And on their website, you can watch a live feed of people ice skating next to it, can you? See, this is the modern world. I double dare you to look up a picture of the uh, Rockefeller Center Christmas tree in New York. You will, I promise you, you will never have seen a better Christmas tree in your life. It's amazing. You virtually need sunglasses to look at a photograph of it. It's so bright. And then you, you look at our sad limp thing in Trafalgar Square and you just think, well, uh, you know, for a third world country, that might pass muster, but not, not for global Britain. Oh! Weak, pathetic. It's just embarrassing is what it is. And I don't blame the Norwegians. I mean, they, they may hate us. I've got no idea. Maybe it was an accident. But you can dress up a tree with lights. It doesn't have to be a beautiful tree if you prettify it with lights and baubles and such. That's the whole point of lights and baubles, for crying out loud. And what do we do? The same sad string of lights every year, just in a stripe up and down. It's terrible. I would have sent it back. <laughs> Oh, word. I mean, it, it came in in some uh, manner, and presumably it didn't come in by dinghy <coughs> overnight. You know, under cloak of night, it didn't come in. It came in, uh, you know, the full blazing light of day. We saw it at the border. I would have sent it back. I'd have claimed a refund, even if it was free. Lorraine tweets, nothing wrong with our trees in Uxbridge. Who needs Trafalgar Square? Local MP is a few twigs short of a full branch, though. A few sh twigs short of a full branch, though. A hey, Bodge? I, I can't comment on that. Sid text, the reason that the tree looks so rubbish is because it took forever to get through border control. Now, now let me just see how many texts and emails I've got to... Uh, I'm never going to get through all these. Oh, no, there's more above them as well. There must be a hundred. I'll never get through these. George tweet that... Mo uh, <laughs> well, this is true. Yeah, this is actually factually accurate. What's Boris Johnson good for? Making babies. 
Andrew says it's not one rule for us, one rule for them. It's you must follow the rules unless you're very rich or you're an MP. Yeah, or both. Chris says, I'm sure I'm not the only curious listener who's been greeted recently with a note in my inbox from Amazon. Quotes, based on your recent activity, we thought you might be interested in this Photomax vintage photo of Nick Abbott. And I've just seen they're now doing two for one. I might get two more for my bedside table. Much love, says Chris. Well, that's a little freaky, Chris. What is that? A vintage photo of me on Amazon. Why? Who's doing it? I mean, it can't possibly be anybody buying it. Why bother? Uh, and Paul texts, I think in relation to the, the reports of uh, potential snow in Scotland, yum a McFlurry. Another listener with material. Oh, no. 0345 6060 973. It's 12.30 on LBC. The news headlines with Zora Solomon. Leading Britain's conversation. LBC with Nick Abbott. I really like you. Do you like me? Uh, well, I don't know. Like is a pretty strong word. Bruce emails. Cressida Dick said she did not have to investigate Christmas parties at number 10 because nobody has written to her. If I throw something at Nigel Farage and nobody writes to Cressida, will I get away with it? Don't throw anything at Nigel Farage. Gordon says, This time last week I was listening to you under the bed covers, all wrapped up in woolies in a dark house with no heating during a power cut in Scotland. You still made me smile, says Gordon. I just cannot believe that people are still without power, for crying out loud. What year is it? 2020. <coughs> Keep up. Global Britain. Can't even keep the blooming lights on. Gordon says, oh no, I've just read that. Idiot. Katie texts, I don't understand why people who do want to be controlled by the government for having a vaccine, but they are happy to be controlled to all eat the same food on Christmas Day. <laughs> what? I don't understand why people who do want to to be controlled by the government for having don't perhaps who don't I'll try it with don't see if it makes more sense I don't understand why people who don't want to be controlled by the government for having a vaccine but they're happy to be controlled to eat all the same food on Christmas Day <laughs> and usually it's rubbish right I mean that's uh, that, that's not offending Jesus on his birthday is it <laughs> Christmas dinner is usually rubbish isn't it be honest and the person who's doing the cooking has had the worst day ever because trying to keep in your mind all of the timings of the various things all come together at the same time oh. it's impossible so something's going to be ruined before it gets to the table and then that will um, cause the cook to become frazzled it's either the potatoes aren't crispy enough or the carrots are so solid you could use them to bang nails in a wall with or the uh, sprouts are, you know, ugh. and the turkey will be so dry you might you might as well be stuffed with sand. It's usually a huge, tasteless disappointment. Am I right? It's supposed to be the best uh, meal of the year, and it just flat out totally isn't. It's just like New Year's Eve is supposed to be the best night of the year. <laughs> And it usually flat out totally isn't either. It's because you, you, you build it up too much. It comes with too much antici. Josh texts, The revelation that Number 10 held a Christmas party last year brings to mind Bodger's sad, droopy eyes when he addressed the nation to cancel Christmas. What a calculated, cynical actor he is. That's right. Maybe his sad, droopy eyes because were because he's just come from uh, a party. Booze. Exactly. Yes, that's right, with a heavy heart. <laughs> I must take my party hat off and address the nation. Hold my drink. What an absolute shower. Frankie texts, Nick, if you fancy a pizza, then you've got some credit here at our place in Kent. Come and see us over Christmas, Frankie and Finn's wood-fired pizza. Well, that'd be great, Frankie, but <laughs> Kent's a big place. Can you narrow it down a bit? Or shall I just wander around Kent until I bump into you? 
Uh, Lucas says, as a non as a non native English speaker, I never got the word under secretary. It sounds like someone that is below a secretary. Disgusting. Can you please explain? Thanks, says Lucas. Let me think about that for a second. No. No. And furthermore. No. 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 I cannot explain. In- the English language is is a weird and bizarre thing. It is beyond explanation. I mean, why do we pronounce uh, T H O U G H though? Why so many silent letters? What's the point? It should be T H O or the tho- the <laughs> Why chuck just a number of random letters on the end of a word that you don't pronounce? What's the point of that? Just to confuse foreigners. Andrew emails. I don't think this Christmas tree was ever put in a lorry. I think it was dragged. Be- <laughs> I think it was dragged behind a lorry all the way from Norway. Yeah, that does sound about right. Yeah. A sad, pathetic excuse of a Christmas tree. Pete says, what I need to know now is uh, that Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland all have their own governments, but us poor English are at the hands uh, completely of the bodger. Yeah, that's true. That's one of the reasons that um, I appreciated the European Union so much, is that there was an overseer. Because I think that what this party needs more than anything else is to be overseen. Just to give them complete control doesn't seem like a very good idea, does it? (laughs) Exactly. He's our leader. Can you believe that? Peppa Pig world. Oh, please, stop going on about it. Best time he's ever had. Squeezing himself into uh, one of those teacup rides. (laughs) Where was it again? Peppa Pig world. Yeah, uh, Yeah, I know. (laughs) Uh, Warren says it's only a mask it's only for the next three weeks it's only next year it's only forever except it's only one life says Warren yeah hey Warren stop whining yeah I don't like him either but uh, you know oh my Cron we're all going to die people um, there seems to be a change in the air as regards all of that you know, survey after survey after survey did suggest that people were not only were com- completely fine with all of the uh, various instructions of don't do this and don't do that and, you know, moan, 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 moan. And uh, they thought, not only do we actually positively enjoy being sent indoors, but we want to be sent indoors with extra punishment. It was so weird. So many polls came out over the last couple of years. You know, it's been like two years already. It is two years now. You believe that? So many polls came out, and um, they did suggest that not only did we uh, think that you know we should be restricted socially, and we shouldn't be able to go out, and we should close bars and restaurants, and uh, never mind about clubs. Forget about it. That that's right out, and every government uh, edict and privation. We received with, uh, you know, like giddy uh, delight to the point that we actually wanted more restrictions on our lives, bizarrely. I mean, nobody I spoke to wanted uh, more. But then, you know, polls came out and they, they suggested exactly that. That the government wasn't going hard enough. But now the worm appears to have turned. A YouGov survey found that 64% of Brits are against any stay-at-home orders. 64%. That's almost half. 61% said they did not want draconian restrictions on welcoming guests into their homes. Now, I wonder if this is a Christmas thing. Is this a Jesus birthday thing? I think perhaps it is. That's another thing that we, uh, you know, put too much... um, uh, uh, hope and uh, focus on like it's supposed to be the best time of the year when well, it usually isn't but th- if, if this poll had been done in the summer it, it might have got a different result but either, it's either that it's either a Christmas uh, thing or uh, p- people have changed their minds about this now you know other countries their citizens are ripping up pap- like the French uh, you know the French <laughs> Yes, that's them. They're picking up paving, paving stones and chucking them at gendarme, and they've been doing it on a weekly basis for ages now. But we've just think, oh well, you know, mustn't grumble. 
as we, as we trudge back inside. But apparently, uh, we are th- we're not thinking that way now. 61% said they did not want draconian restrictions on welcoming guests into their homes. And this is, um, you know, even when, when that uh, Omicron virus is uh, among us. More people backed, however, there's a big but, big giant wobbling butt here. More people backed closing nightclubs rather than keeping them open. I can't believe that there's still nightclubs to open. How have they managed to survive? I mean, they, they closed their doors, you know, like uh, almost uh, two years ago, and then the rats took over. They must be absolutely riven with them. And then they opened them up, and they uh, you know, opened for a couple of days, and now the public want them shut again. Probably because it's kids, you know, having a good time. Those pesky kids. 55% want uh, nightclubs closed. 35% want, uh, 34% wanted to keep them open. This is according to a YouGov survey. Now, I don't know whether they... Act, uh, yeah, because it's YouGov, it's a professional organisation, they probably um, chose their, uh, their um, survey demographics based on, uh, you know, a reflection of who we are as a nation. But that is kind of surprising. About, about two-thirds don't want to uh, stay at home orders they don't want draconian restrictions but they do want nightclubs shut <laughs> that seems a, li- a little unfair don't it a slim majority said large sports and entertainment events should not go ahead 60 percent support remaining two meters apart from those outside their household and 69 percent in favor of social distancing in pubs and restaurants how can you social distance in a pub and a restaurant, for crying out loud? Please, let's not go back to that. I can't stand it anymore. But, you know, it's, uh, it's beyond our control because we're uh, in obeisance to the dear leader, even though he does sound like this. <laughs> we're following him. What could possibly go wrong? This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Come on, we're running late! Chris texts, we need proportional representation voting as first past the post only benefits the Tories and the likes of Mog. You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. Why doesn't Keir Starmer really, uh, realise that PR is needed, says Chris? I don't know. It seems a bit weird, doesn't it? I mean, maybe he thinks it would um, uh, it would be somewhat deflating as a leader to admit to the fact that uh, you cannot personally and on your own uh, form the next government. Maybe it uh, seems um, uh, it would uh, be uh, emas- emasculating. But is that the right word? Something like that. Demasculating. <laughs> That's, no, it's probably not that. It's, uh, it's emasculating. It, it, it seems right, but it doesn't sound right. But something like that. You, do you know what I mean? No. Oh, OK, then. Maybe he has an, uh, uh, an over-large uh, opinion of his own abilities. That doesn't sound right either. But my, my brain seems to be falling apart at this moment. Shackhaft texts... Australia has obligatory has an obligatory voting system. It gave them Tony Abbott. I urge you to reconsider, says Shaq Half. Great name, though, Tony. Georgia tweets, they can see you voted, but they don't know who you voted for. This is in reference to this uh, nice lady that was uh, explaining uh, a little while ago that uh, she normally gets chucked out of the... <laughs> she goes and votes. She gets chucked out because she makes a scene, whinging and whining and moaning about the uh, the fact that she sees it that there's a number printed on the back of your voting uh, slip that corresponds to a uh, number that they take down and put in their book, so they can go back and see who you voted for on your permanent record. They can see who you voted, but they don't know who you voted for. Says Georgia. That's what I thought. Paul Tex, I was hiding from the Tories canvassing at my door and I heard them say, leave it, he voted Labour anyway. <laughs> Which is suspicious, unless you had a Labour Party poster in your window. 
which would be a giveaway. Max texts, your voting Lady Judy is correct, but the information is stored separately and you need a court order to open the large envelopes that they are stored in. That would only be in the case of uh, voter fraud. Also a massive task to check how everyone voted, uh, says uh, Mags, a presiding officer. A presiding officer. Oh. We have an expert writing into the show. Can you believe that? No. I am stunned. Yeah, well, it might be a massive task, but that wouldn't prevent them from, uh, you know, engaging in it if they really, really wanted to know, right? If they wanted to correct you. CL says, exit polls by the political parties are only worthwhile if adequate canvassing has been carried out in the weeks prior to the election. Because the idea is to ensure that the people who indicated that they will be voting for the party you wish to monitor have actually turned out and voted which sounds like way too much information. But thanks, CL. Patrick says, Ever thought that weird breathing in your ear last week was linked to the visit that you had a year ago by somebody wandering through the building before disappearing as quickly as they arrived? Get the place checked out. It might be time to rethink your take on the paranormal. Yeah, that was a bit weird uh, just last week. I just started the show and uh, it was like somebody whispered in my ear. Freaked me out. <laughs> Um, not that I made a big thing about it, you know. Whinging and whining and moaning. Yeah, a little bit. I was the only person that heard it. Doesn't mean to say it didn't happen. Connor text, Quantum of Solace was the worst Bond. Fact. It was pretty bad. Yeah. He has actually only done two good ones. Um, uh, what's his name? Daniel Craig. The first one, as I said before, which was um, Casino Royale and uh, Skyfall, which is an excellent, excellent film. The others, you, uh, you can just uh, leave. Thank you, but you have delighted us enough. Appreciate it. Thank you. Paul texts, um, people who don't vote should pay 25% more on their council tax. That's a good idea. Yeah, then they get them out voting. Give them a discount. Don't call it a fine, call it a discount. You get a discount if you, uh, if you vote, if you take part. Everybody should take part. I mean, I don't trust people, but um, I think the more of us that uh, make a decision, the better it might be. Or maybe it should be the reverse of that. People should take a test. I've said this before. This isn't a controversial thing to say, is it? People should take a test before they're allowed to vote or procreate. What's controversial about that? Kate says, why did Norway send us a very big twig with delusions of grandeur? And will Bojo fi fi find a way to blame France for it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> French people. Boo! Ruining our tree. Uh, Frank Tex, would love to open a pub chain throughout Great Britain called the Jolly Chancer with a picture of Bodge on the boards outside. That does sound like a good idea. <laughs> I like that uh, DC says if the Met Commissioner receives complaints and reads them in a certain order does she get extra points I don't know uh, let's ask an expert and it was 30 or 35 questions the first questions are very easy the last questions are much more difficult uh, like a memory question it's uh, like you'll go person Woman, man, camera, TV. So they say, could you repeat that? So I said, yeah. So it's woman, camera, TV. Okay, that's very good. If you get it in order, you get extra points. Okay, now he's asking you other questions. And then 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes later, they say, remember the first question? Not the first, but the 10th question. Give us that again. Can you do that again? And you go, woman, man, person, man, camera, TV. If you get it in order, you get extra points. They said nobody gets it in order. It's actually not that easy. But for me, it was easy. And that's not an easy question. In other words, they ask it to you. They give you five names and you have to repeat them. And that's okay. If you repeat them out of order, it's okay. But, but you know, it's not as good. 
But then when you go back about 20, 25 minutes later and they say, go back to that question. They don't tell you this. Go back to that question and repeat them. Can you do it? And you go, camera, man, person, woman, TV. They say, that's amazing. How did you do that? I do it because I have like a good memory because I'm cognitively there. (laughs) I can't remember ever hearing him so excited about anything. I mean, he was just thrilled relating that tale. Like a child. Just so excited. (laughs) He used to be the president of the United States of America. Can you believe that? Oh, shut up! I mean, really? What kind of a person would vote for him? I love the poorly educated. Yeah, that is right, yeah. And there's plenty of them. The dinglings. Your husband's an idiot, Melania. I don't care. She's actually not that bothered. <laughs> what do you think, Kanye? Whoop dee dee scoop poop. I know. <laughs> Meanwhile, in this country, this chap used to be the uh, head of education. And I, 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 yeah, exactly. What a way to run a planet, eh? Dreadful. I am stunned. Patrick says, I'm waiting for Boris to release his festive single, It's My Party, and I can lie if I want to. James says, A trillion seconds is equivalent to 31,709 years. Yeah, that does sort of blow my mind. Yowza. The difference between a million, a billion, and a trillion. I can't remember off the top of my head, so I'll just make it up. But I think it's more or less a million seconds is 11 days. A billion seconds is 37 years. And a trillion seconds is 31,709 years. What? I know. 57 billion for an app, says Lee. Spaceships to Mars cost a fraction of that. That's that's actually true. <laughs> yeah, and, and the spaceship to Mars that costs a fraction of the amount that we spent on a phone app that doesn't work, actually works. The rocket to Mars works. Our phone app that costs £57 billion doesn't. Still doesn't. How is this entire regime not in jail right now? Let's write a letter to Cressida Dick. If you... If you uh, subscribe to the podcast, then the next episode will get squirted up your life as though by magic. And this show that uh, is just coming to an end now does get uh, created into a podcast. We take the news and the ads out, which means it takes less time to listen to. You'll use less electricity and you won't have to sell your house to pay your fuel bill. You can thank me. No, wait, I've changed my mind. You can thank me now. Thank you. It's called Nick Abbott, The Whole Show. Ask for it by name. On an internet near you. Nick Abbott, the whole show. Uh, If you've texted and tweeted and so on, one of the thousand that I haven't got around to, then I'll try and get uh, around to them tonight at 10 o'clock. Stick around. Ian Payne will be here at four. But right now, Clive Ball. Nick, thank you. And coming up, we're going to continue the political theme this week. 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 The political theme.